City Clerk, would you call, call the roll? Mayor McClellan? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Here. Councilmember Radner? Here. Councilmember Edgar? Here in Oak Park in Oakland County. Councilmember Whitehead? President, Oak Park, Michigan, Oakland County. Um, is there a motion to the agenda? So moved. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Councilmember Edgar. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have the consent agenda. Um, these are routine items presented without discussion. <clears throat> and if you can have one of the items removed for discussion. A, regular council meeting minutes of October 18th, 2021. B, special council meeting minutes of October 18th. C, Parks and Rec Commission meeting minutes of September 14th. D, Traffic Safety Board meeting minutes of August 18th. E, Corridor Improvement Authority board meeting minutes of August 19th. Retirement board meeting minutes of July 26th. Request to approve payment of application number three for the 2019 recording in progress. Bridge enhancement. Um, project M670 to Z contractors of Shelby Township, Michigan for the amount of $15,000. Request to approve payment of the nine mile linear park play equipment to mid states recreation of Pataskala, Ohio for the amount of $328,000. $741.95. And finally, licenses, new and renewals submitted for November 1st, 2021. There a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Whitehead. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Um, uh, Director Van Vleck, are there elected officials? Um, I don't believe so, but Courtney, did you see any? Let me just check with. I do not see any elected officials on. Okay. We have uh, no public hearings or communications or special licenses. We are down to item two <coughs> ordinances. Second reading and adoption of a proposed zoning map amendment for the city of Oak Park to change the zoning from B1 neighborhood, neighborhood business to B2 general business district for the following addresses. <laughs> 13,300, 13,400, 13,500, 13,600, 13,630, 13,650 and 13,700. Is there a motion to approve the second reading and adoption? Moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you, Council Member Radner. Um, discussion, this was the uh, eight mile rezoning. Um, any discussion or questions? Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Councilmember Edgar. Yes. Councilmember Radner. Yes. Councilmember Whitehead. Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item B is second reading and adoption of a proposed amendment to section 18353. Chapter 18, Article 9, Division 2 of the Code of Ordinances. Um, first, we'll get a motion and discussion, and um, a second, and then we'll get an explanation. Is there a motion to, um, to approve the second reading? So moved. Thank you. Um, Mayor Pro Tem in a second? So moved. Second. Council Member Edgar, thank you. Um, uh, City Manager Tungate, who is best to just um, review this about water retention required and the cost and the plan? Madam Mayor, I'm going to ask our Deputy Director Dan Fairless to uh, take this one or Assistant City Manager Kevin Yee. Kevin, it looks like maybe it's you, huh? 
Yes, I, this one's mine. I'll take this one um, for Director Barrett. Um, this is just um, a change to comply with our MS4 permit, which is our stormwater permit, permit with um, EGLE, which is the Environmental Great Lakes and Energy um, Department for uh, the state of Michigan. And really for us, it's just kind of a housekeeping um, cleanup of our ordinances to comply with their permit. So there, there aren't a lot of changes to our water retention master plan or anything? That's correct. There's not a lot of changes. It's just some housekeeping to comply. Got it. Thank you very much. Any other questions? A roll call vote, please. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Councilmember Edgar? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Councilmember Radner? Yes. Councilmember Whitehead? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Item C, 12C, is the second reading and adoption of an ordinance to amend chapter 82 utilities of the code of ordinances of the city of Oak Park, Michigan by amending sections 82, 261, 82, 264, 82, 268, and adding section 8273 thereof. Uh, first um, motion and a second, please. So moved. Thank you, yes. Council Member Edgar, and a second. Second. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, uh, would um, Assistant City Manager Yee be the one to uh, summarize this one also? I believe so, Madam Mayor. Actually, th this one is Dan Ferris. This one is yeah. Dan, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. Fairless. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members, and City Manager Tungate. This request is uh, a, a request to update our ordinance, our cross-connection control ordinance. Um, I believe sometime in the early 70s, maybe 1973, we developed an ordinance that was required by then the DEQ or the DNR to uh, prevent water customers, non-residential water customers, from cross connecting or back siphoning into the city water supply and possibly contaminating the city water supply. Now Eagle is requiring municipalities to um, expand their program and include residential structures to uh, do the same thing, go through an inspection process and make sure there's no hazards where the city water supply will be contaminated. So it is a safety measure. Yes. And it, it is required by Eagle. Um, they are requiring all municipalities to expand their plans to include residential. Okay. Are there uh, questions from council members? Hearing none, a uh, roll call vote, please. Um, acting city clerk. <laughs> Councilmember Edgar. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Councilmember Radner. Yes. Councilmember Whitehead. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Um, I don't see anything for city attorney, so that puts us at item 14, city manager Eric Tungate. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. I'm actually gonna turn it over for 14A to Assistant City Manager, Kevin Yee. But before I do, this is just in follow-up to the major change, obviously with our, our trash hauler. So I had asked Kevin to uh, appear tonight and, and provide an overview so that we're all aware of what's happening. Thank you and good evening again. Um, so um, for points of clarification, I just wanna to make sure um, everyone kind of understands how our trash pickup works. The city of Oak Park in all the cities in the uh, 12 towns communities, I guess, or the Sacra communities have um, gone to uh, Sacra to bid out our trash hauling, weight, um, recycling pickup and our yard waste pickup um, and brush pickup as well. Um, so Sacra bids out all those in a collaborative effort for all the communities. And um, at that time, it was probably about 12 to 15 years ago, I believe that they, they did this and it saved us all a bunch of money because we had economies of scale. We had a lot a large consortium of, of municipalities that we've been out. So they did that and um, 
so we do not hold the contract with any vendor. Um, we have an agreement with Soccer that they would bid it out on our behalf. So I just want to point that out as a clarification. Tringali has had approached Sakra uh, a couple of weeks ago. And as of recently, over the last year or so, the service from Tringali really has gone downhill, not just in our community, but in a lot of the others. And, you know, they've really been struggling to keep up. So they approached Sakra and indicated that, you know, they're just overwhelmed. They can't get help. Um, you know, some of their, uh, even some of their supervisors had left or retired or whatever. So they really struggled to get help. Um, so we, uh, you know, they, they said they just can't, they can't handle it. And they wanted to be relieved of the contract to pick up Oak Park. Um, Oak Park was a, they thought was about the size city that they felt that they were relieved they could operate more effectively in the other communities that they have. Um, so Sakura approached us and said, well, what, you know, what do you guys think? You know, do you, are you interested in trying to get it, uh, you know, having one of the other vendors do it? Or should we try to kind of, you know, hold them accountable to their contract? Um, and, you know, for us, the, like I said, the, the service has, has been, you know, not as good as it was. I thought they were a good vendor for a long time, but it hasn't been that good in the last year or so. Um, we've noticed it, you know, we get a lot more calls, residents have noticed so we said, well, I think we'd be interested in entertaining it. So they approached both car trucking and GFL, which they also have contracts with um, for other, you know, other soccer communities. And GFL said they weren't interested. They would do it at no cost increase. And um, they also added in a, a, a clause for us that they would allow us to utilize two garbage trucks um, during leaf pickup, which has been a huge struggle for us to get garbage trucks every year. Um, we use a, a method of pickup, picking up leaves that we started probably about seven, eight years ago of using what, what's called the claw to pick up leaves and use a garbage truck to compact them and we could pick up, you know, roughly, uh, you know, probably eight to 10 trucks worth, normal sucker trucks worth by using this method. So we have two of those on the streets. Um, for those who have been here a while, probably have seen the amount of leaves on the curbside has significantly been reduced since we've been using this method. Um, you know, when I kind of first started, the leaves were literally higher than your car. So anyway, a little side tangent, but they were going to guarantee us two trucks, which we struggled to get. And the trucks that we've been using are very old from we're renting them from places and they require a lot of maintenance and they're down a lot. So this was a, a great addition to our contract. Um, so they, they said they would um, add that in. Um, so anyway, with that being, with all that being said, um, you know, we agreed that I think if they did that, I think we would be interested. Um, I did talk to the city manager. They did not give us much time to, to execute this, but they wanted to get this agreement in place for pickup this Thursday. Um, so, you know, we looked for feedback in an expedited manner. We really hadn't, see, hadn't seen any. Um, if anything, some people are somewhat positive about it because I think they have seen some of the service go, go down from Tringali. And um, so we're, we did tell Sakura, you know, we're comfortable with it. And they went ahead and and executed that uh, change and GFL is set to pick up on Thursday. So really all the things that the, what residents might see the difference is obviously different trucks. Um, Tringali had that brown colored truck and GFL has a green truck. So they'll see a different truck, which may get people to call or question what's going on. Um, Cause if they, especially people that are home and seeing this every week. Um, but they also may change the time. So if, if Tringali was kind of on a regular routine to pick up your garbage, say between nine and 10, you know, just as kind of a general observation, you know, that may change. So we're asking our residents to make sure it's out by 7 a.m. You know, they're probably going to take several months, to be honest, to kind of get a routine down, get their supervision in place. And so some things are going to change. You know, we're going to be, you know, on top of them to make sure they collect everyone and, and uh, you know, they, they pick it up properly and all that. But um, residents may see some changes and so we're, we're asking them to be patient uh, but if they're missed definitely call us because we don't we don't want anyone missed we're not going to accept that as a change but um, you know there will be some changes and, and ultimately I think it'll be a good thing. Thank you Kevin. Council members do you have any further questions? Um, I know this has been a very quick turnaround um, you know primarily because as Kevin mentioned they gave us pretty short notice. I do have a question from Madam Mayor. Um, so if, Trigali, if Trigali's having trouble 
getting employees, isn't GFL, aren't they facing the same shortage? So that's a great question. Um, they've indicated that they're able to do it and um, that they're geared up and pre prepared to do it. Um, you know, from my standpoint, I think there is a trouble, there is a, an issue in general with uh, getting employees. We've seen it in Oak Park here for several of our um, several of our positions, but uh, GFL has indicated that they they are interested, they want to do it. They're a much larger organization, so maybe they can absorb it with their current employees, or maybe they have a more you know robust HR department that's more you know active in in having employees. Or I, I you know I can't really answer to their operation, but I know they're a much larger organization, and um, they've indicated they they won't have any problem. So you know we can only go by what they say until they prove us wrong, I guess. So, but there is no doubt Tringali did have a problem. Okay, so Tringali dropped Oak Park, um, and does GFL? So GFL serves other soccer communities. Correct. Yeah, what they kind do Royal Oak. They do. They do several other soccer communities. Okay. Thanks. Um, let's see. Uh, so there isn't anything. This was an update and our vote isn't required. Um, Correct. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm gonna move to uh, 14B. Um, Crystal, I think you're taking this one, no? I could take it. Kevin, you want me to take it or do you want to take it? Kevin, um, Crystal, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I'll, I'll it's take the it. It's OHM. Um, yes, so attaches a proposal um, from OHM advisors for landscaping services, um, for landscape architecture services for the Nine Mile Road Linear Park. Um, so we have we have been we've seeked uh, we were seeking professional services to design a professional landscape for this park um, for a lot of reasons. One is the aesthetics. Obviously, um, we've done a, a great deal of work on this park. We wanted it to be um, aesthetically pleasing, but there's also some functional um, parts to this. For instance, creating natural barriers from the playground and the street and um, kind of keeping separation between, you know, along the path. So there are some functional things. And, you know, we also wanted, you know, low maintenance areas where it's harder to cut, like along the that whoop de doo type ramp. Um, there's areas there where the slope is pretty steep and things like that. So we would put some different ground covers and, um, and there already is some nice landscaping where we have the bioswales, which um, OHM advisors had designed. Um, which I think turned out great and they have been low maintenance and it worked out very well for us. So um, we thought this was a great opportunity to utilize them again to design uh, really the landscape along this whole park. We walked it with them, went through you know some of the areas that we thought were important to create that separation and um, you know I think they'll come up with a good plan. So it is recommended that City Council approve the attached proposal from OHM advisors to provide professional services um, for landscape architecture for the Nanmar Road Linear Park, M739, for an hourly not to exceed cost of $17,500. There is $140,000 dedicated to landscaping for the Nanmar Road Linear Park budget and the city's general fund and city owned property fund. Nice. Uh, is there a motion to approve this proposal? So no moved. Mayor Pro Tem, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Edgar. Um, I have several questions. Uh, give us a short review of bioswales. How would I know one when I looked at one and what does it do for me? Okay, uh, a bioswale is an area that captures rainwater and allows it to be absorbed by both the earth and plants. So on Nymar Road, you can see, I believe there are four locations. Um, where you can see areas where there's there's plants and then there's low spots where that water drains and it goes into these bioswales where it is absorbed into the earth or, you know, again, feeding, you know, plants with, with water. Um, you'll see some plants if you drive down that area, especially of the linear park. And there's also a section on Nama Road to the west of um, the trailhead uh, where there are some of these um, bioswales. This area of Oak Park in particular, we have some sandy soils and it is a great opportunity for us to capture rainwater and not add it to the stormwater system 
thereby reducing the amount of stormwater that goes into the system, um, reduces our overall um, charges that we would pay as a city, and reduces the amount of water in the storm system for things like, you know, when there's huge rain um, events and things like that, this would kind of uh, um, give some uh, relief to the system. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, perfect. Um, uh, can then some sort of practical things, this is going to go in in the spring, is that correct? Correct, that's the plan, yes. So that the grand opening will be uh, in the spring? Yes, I would like to. I would like to plan a grand opening after the plantings are in because I think that's going to be a huge uh, aesthetic improvement and also the art. Um, the art we hope to be in also before we do a grand opening, um, so we have the whole the whole package done. We've done some preliminary. You know, we did a preliminary grand opening for the pocket parks and and that was wonderful. And then this would kind of complete um, the whole the whole area here. And one. Uh... Can kids, when can kids play on the equipment, even though the landscaping isn't in? The equipment, they're still doing some finishing touches on some of the, the uh, play equipment, but a, uh, it should be ready to ready for them to play, you know, within a, another week or so. Nice. It looks absolutely beautiful. And, um, it will slow down, according to studies, slow down the traffic on Nine Mile as people glance over at this gorgeous structure and, and look at it. It will slow traffic down and make it safer. So um, uh, couldn't be more delighted with uh, a project. Uh, we need probably a vote. Um, so uh, um, acting city clerk, Unless there are further questions from anyone. Um, Acting City Clerk, would you uh, call the roll, please? Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Council Member Radner. Yes. Council Member Whitehead. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Council Member Edgar. Yes. Motion carried. Great news, people. Thank you, council members. Um, Assistant City Manager Kevin Yee, 14C, please. Attached is a request to purchase uh, lawn equipment for the Public Works Department. The Public Works Department is requesting authorization to purchase the, the following equipment from Sourcewell Contract, which is a pre bid um, government contract. It's a woods 15 foot turf bat wing. So it's a large mower that we use to uh, mow our parks, in particular uh, Shepherd Park. And the total cost of this equipment is $19,500. We did have $17,000 budgeted, but we have had other savings in that motor pool line item that we can utilize to um, purchase this equipment. So it is recommended that City Council authorize the Public Works Department to participate in the source wall pre-bid contract for lawn equipment totaling $19,500 from the motor pool fund. Okay, um, is there a motion to uh, approve? So moved. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council, Council Member Radner. Um, any discussion or questions? I do have a quick question, Mayor. Yes. Council um, Member Radner. Is this a replacement for uh, an old one or is this just an addition to the fleet? This is a replacement for an old one. And to be honest, I don't have in front of me how old that one was. Usually I'd be more prepared for that, but I do not have the age of it. But I know it's been there, you know, well longer than I've been down in that department. Um, I would guess it's at least 20 years old. So it is a replacement for equipment that, that we do have. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? A roll call, please. Council Member Radner. Yes. Council Member Whitehead. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Council Member Edgar. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. 14D, Director Kimberly Mar Maroney, please. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council members. 
Um, I am presenting tonight to you our Corridor Improvement Authority uh, Annual Report. Give me one moment while I share my screen here. Okay, so the Quarter Improvement Authority um, was established back in 2016. And what it does is captures tax increment financing revenue. And what that means is the value that was established when it was created in 2016 of $3.4 million in tax revenue above and beyond that is captured by the authority and then is used for improvements within the uh, quarter improvement authority district. The nice thing about it is it also allows us to capture state and county tax revenues that we normally would not be able to capture. So on the left is in the blue, all of the parcels that are part of the corridor improvement authority district. And if you look on the right, the building permits that we, um, gave out in our district last year was 22. The year prior was nine, so it went up substantially. Uh, the value of the building permits almost doubled from the year before to $738,330. And the average asking price of rent per square foot went up 2.8% to $1.71. And then you see um, the base property value of 3.4 million and from um, last year, the CIA property value went up an additional $0.1 million to 3.6. We also took a look at the rents um, and market rates per square foot of sales within the district, um, first focusing on Coolidge. Uh, the vacancy rate is 4.9%, which is down uh, 1.3% from the year prior. So that means that we are renting more of the properties. Uh, the market rent per square foot went up $1.50. So that means they're getting more per square foot for the rents. And then the market sale price went up an additional $18, which means when they're selling the properties on a uh, Coolidge, they are getting more per square foot as well. I'm sorry, that went up $3 on Coolidge. On 11 Mile Road, uh, the vacancy rate um, went down 1.3%. Um, on the market rent side, it went up $1.50. And um, the market there was a spike in 2018. Do you know what caused that? Are you looking at the right hand? Vacant, the left, the vacancy uh, and market rate, rent per square foot. The vacancy. Yeah. There was a spike in 2018. I'm just curious why. Yeah, I believe what caused that is because um, one of the main buildings, Randolph Tool Building, um, wasn't even listed um, as being vacant, even though it was. And then they put it on the market when they started to try and advertise it when we rezoned it to mixed use. So guessing, but I think that that's one of the biggest causes for that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On Nine Mile Road, you can see the difference between 2020 and 2021. The vacancy rate um, went down or went up, I'm sorry, um, by 0.9%. So on Nine Mile, it means that we actually have more properties for lease um, than we did the year prior, which is unfortunate. The market rent per square foot went up a whopping 0.03 cents. And the market sale price did go up $10 a square foot. So not a whole lot of changes on Nine Mile Road yet. Projects well, that were park is just being completed. Yep. Park yep. Improvements are just being completed, and as some wise person told me long ago, that economic development is a twenty-year process, and um, it takes a, a little while. It's not instant. No, and you're absolutely right, Mayor. It does take time for things to actually materialize, even though the improvements have been made or almost complete. It will take time before you actually see the benefit. Uh, the projects that the Quarter Improvement Authority was involved in um, was we launched and funded a patronicity campaign and were able to raise over $50,000, which helped to fund the Nine Mile Linear Parks and the art on Nine Mile. 
We also purchased additional streetscape furniture and planter pots. We added 13 new banners, um, the Welcome to Oak Park banners that you see along the corridors, and those were placed on Coolidge and 11 Mile. Um, multiple new business ventures were pursued on the 11 Mile Road corridor. We also worked with our businesses to provide a COVID business assistance package and help them through the whole pandemic. And we helped the uh, Oakland County to disperse the restaurant relief funds to help restaurants open outdoor dining facilities. Uh, new businesses we welcomed in the uh, Corridor Improvement Authority in 2021 was up from eight the year prior. So we welcomed 16 new businesses, which are listed here. And with our facade grant program that we dedicate funds to every year to help our businesses do improvements to their buildings, we invested $3,895 of our funds and the improvements totaled um, an increase of $11,394. And those were for Regal Wines and Unexpected Craft Brewing Company. And that is the end of my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. I do have a question. Um, so the facade improvement grants we the city will give a business up to 2500 in matching funds is that is that how we do it yeah it's a 2500 50% grant match so if they do a project totaling 5000 they could receive up to 2500 if it qualifies so it seems and like a lot of businesses haven't taken advantage of that no you're absolutely right we wish more would take advantage of it and we're getting the word out, right? Mm -hmm. So they, of course, they have to spend money to improve their facade and some don't want to do it. Yeah, and you have to understand too, the last couple of years have been, you know, more of a struggle for our businesses and their finances. So um, prior to that, we were using our funds um, more than we have been the last two years, but it's been a trying time for businesses these past two years as well. Mm -hmm. Regal Wines looks great. It's a huge improvement. Yeah. Can you uh, give us just a couple sentences about Regal Wines? They're actually a wine distributor. So um, they just distribute wines um, to different uh, party stores and what have you. Thank you. I was hoping for tasting. <laughs> maybe soon, Mayor, maybe soon. <laughs> You know, it would be perfect if they did their rooftop and they put seating up there. You'd be right under the water tower. So there you go. <laughs> hey, now we're talking. See? Um, the, the, how do you value a corridor? So how do you value, um, how did you start with 3.4 million? I understand that, I understand the incremental part of it, but how do you value that? You take the property assessed values. So we work with the assessing offices, both at the county and our local um, Oak Park city assessors. And they establish the value based on every parcel that's included. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Director Maroney. We are gonna move on to 14E. Director Crawford. Yes, sir. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and City Council. Agenda item 14E. This is for the special assessment districts number 695, 696, 697 for the unpaid delinquent exceptions recommendations. And this is from the Finance Department, the Treasury Di Division, and the Public Safety Department. At the council meeting of October 18, 2021, City Council adopted the special assessment resolution number nine to confirm the role with the exceptions of 18 attached hereto, which were removed temporarily for further review. City Council also adopted special assessment resolution number 10, setting the due date of November 12th, 2021, together with the penalty of 10% for special assessment district number 695, delinquent utility bills, Special Assessment District Number 696, False Alarms, and Special Assessment District 697 for Delinquent Property Blight. The recommended action, it is recommended that the unpaid invoices belonging to the following parcels be restored 
to the special assessment district 695 along with the original 10% penalty. Parcel number 5225, 31231, 010, 21991 Ridgedale. Parcel number 5225, 31, 302, 003, 21500 Greenfield. Parcel number 5225, 29, 2229, 004, 24620 Pine Village. Parcel number 5225, 30, 230, 024, property address 24301 Kipling. Parcel number 5225, 29, 352, 026, 13310 Woodville. Parcel number 5225, 32, 104, 107, 22124 Dante, apartment 203. Parcel number 25, excuse me, 5225, 31, 128, 047, address 21925 Sussex. Parcel number 5225, 19, 478, 026, address 25125 Coolidge. The following parcels is recommended to be removed from the special assessment district number 695. And that is parcel number 5225, 31, 129, 015, 22010 Sussex. Parcel number 5225, 29, 321, 017, 23811 Scotia. Parcel number 5225, 29160, 109, 24061 Moritz. Parcel number 5225, 19, 233, 013. Address 13641 Borgman. Property number 20, excuse me, 5225, 29, 229089, 24601 Pine View. Parcel number 5225, 29, 406 001 10651 Oak Park Boulevard. And the following unpaid invoices belonging to the following parcels be restored to the special assessment district number 696, along with the original 10% penalty. And that's property 5225 19 101 001 26700 Greenfield. It is also recommended that the unpaid invoices belonging to the following parcels be restored to the special assessment district number 697, along with the 10% penalty, original 10% original penalty. And that's property number 5225, 31, 451, 007, and that's 14600 West 8 Mile Road, 5225, 31, 276, 012, Address 21850 Ridgedale, parcel number 5225, 28, 354, 026, 23231 Republic. Thank you. Um, we need a motion to receive and approve the exception recommendations regarding special assessment districts. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Whitehead. Um, any discussion? Um, okay, uh, we'll I'll do a roll call, please. Council Member Whitehead. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Burns? Yes. Councilmember Edgar? Yes. Councilmember Radner? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. 14F, Director Sandra Crawford, again, please. Thank you. Before you are the fourth quarter investment reports, which show the total citywide cash and investments of $26,460,781, and that's market value, including cash in the operating account, 
$2,530,250 excludes any outstanding checks and other adjustments. The short-term investments in the Oakland County investment pool of $22,859,742,000 and long-term investments of $3,601,039. The city has maximized the investment returns on short-term cash by utilizing the Oakland County investment pool and minimizing the amount maintained in the checking and daily depository accounts. The investment income for this, this period, which are the months of April through June 2021, totaled $56,085. During the fourth quarter, the overall investment returns continued at the same low levels as in the first three quarters of fiscal year 2021, as the economists predicted. The return for the fourth quarter year was approximately 0.08%, and that includes any realized and unreal unrealized gains and losses, primarily due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the Federal Reserve rates nearly at zero. As a result, the city is investing in short term and locking up longer term investments if the individual in interest rates are favorable. Interest rates and overall return for the next quarter are expected to remain low and the Federal Reserve is currently looking at a possible rate increase for the second quarter of this fiscal year 21-22, which may help increase our overall returns. Okay, um... Uh, one tenth of one percent interest. We might as well put it under the mattress. <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Director Crawford. I believe we just receive and file this. I don't think a motion is required. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you, Director Crawford. Um, Director Crawford, I don't know if you want to introduce 14G, but I see Don is here. Yes, um, um, I will I will read the preliminary and if council has any questions, the assessor Don Sheets can answer that for uh, uh, any questions that they may have. So item 14G is a request to combine parcels 5225, 3201, 012 and parcel 5225, 32, 002 into one parcel per the attached survey. Bonfire North End Ventures LLC is the owner of the above reference properties and wants to combine the property into one parcel. One has an existing commercial building on it and the second is commercially vacant. This request was sent to other department, other city departments and no objections were raised by those that responded. The requested lot split, split will not, I'm sorry, the requested lot split will not be detrimental to the adjacent part properties, neighborhoods, or the city of Oak Park. There is no significant benefit to the city of Oak Park other than reduced paperwork. The recommended action is to receive and accept the proposed lot combination request. And attached are the land division application with the attachments and the survey showing the proposed lot combination. And if city council has any questions with respect to the uh, attachments, uh, Don, Sheets, our uh, city assessor, is available for any questions. Let's do the motion and second first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, approve the co combining these parcels. So moved. Thank you, Council Member Edgar. Um, and is there a second? Second. Thank you, Council Member Whitehead. Um, I would like to ask uh, what is the benefit to the owner and what use will this property be put to? Um, from my understanding, it looks like they're just, they own the commercial building and they have the vacant lot behind them. They want to use the back part as parking for their trucks, is my understanding. And they already own both lots, so how does it help them to combine it? It's just one, um, one tax bill and one water bill. Got it. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Um, let's see, roll call vote, please. Uh, Crystal, you're on mute. Sorry about that. There you go. Mayor Pro Tem Burns. Yes. Council Member Edgar. Yes. Mayor McClellan. Yes. Council Member Radner. Yes. Council Member Whitehead. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Director Crawford and Don. 
Um, 14H, Director Flynn, please. Yes, good evening. Uh, tonight I have the community updates for the month of November. So tomorrow, November 2nd is election day with the polls open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. On the ballot, we have the mayor and two council seats along with a public safety and a solid waste millage renewal proposals. Uh, absentee ballots are due back by 8 p.m. as well, and voters are encouraged to utilize the two drop boxes outside City Hall if they'll be dropping off their absentee ballots tomorrow. Um, on November 8th, there is also a City Council organizational meeting at 7 p.m. And then for library events, we have November 9th at 6.30 p.m., Lisa Duke of the W.K. Kellogg Bird Sanctuary will discuss how to identify birds out of nature using indicators such as sight, sound, behavior, and habitat. This is a Zoom event and you can register on the library's website. The library is also holding weekly in-person school readiness story times at 10.15 a.m. for toddlers and those up to six years of age. Space is limited, so you must register through the website as well. And then the library also has access to over 500 online learning courses through LibbyApp.com, or you can download the Libby app to your device. All you need is your Oak Park Library card. Um, for the Recreation Department, we have a new class called Seniors in Motion, which will begin on November 16th and run through December 16th. It's held Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 to 10 a.m. And you can call the Recreation Department for more information. Um, there is a trip to tour the parade company on November 17th. Seats are limited, so please call to reserve your seat. There will also be lunch and a tour of the Whitney for that as well. Uh, the Recreation Department is also going to see the Lion King on January 30th of 2022. And so seats for that are going fast as well. And that'll be at the Michigan Opera House. November 12th is the last day for winter youth basketball. And when that season starts, practices will be in December with games being played in January. The Recreation Department is also offering two martial arts classes. The first is Go Thai Youth, which is Tuesdays from 6.15 to 7 p.m. And that's for ages four to 10, beginning November 9th. And then there's also Go Thai Martial Arts, which is Tuesdays and Thursdays from seven to eight. And that's for um, ages eight and up that begins November 9th. And then we have an eSports League, which offers NB or excuse me, adult NBA 2K21, adult Madden NFL 21, and then Rocket League. The two um, NBA and the Madden Leagues are for ages 18 and up and the Rocket League is for ages 10 and up. And you can register for those online as well. The Oak Park Teen Council is meeting and they're meeting at the high school in the Knights Cafeteria at 4 p.m. November 10th and then December 1st and 15th. The Hip Hop Dance Club, Hip -hop Dance Club is now being held as well. And that's a free weekly hip hop class at Oak Park High School every Wednesdays from 3.15 to 4.15 p.m. The program is sponsored by the Oak Park Recreation Department, the Oak Park Public Library and the Oak Park School Districts. Um, and exciting news, the Recreation Department also received a grant for an archery program. So the grant is valued at $4,000 and will include the necessary equipment such as bows, arrows, targets, and safety equipment to run the program for a minimum of five years. USA Archery will also certify one of our staff members as a level two instructor. So the Recreation Department will be offering these programs and will include it in future um, summer camps and additional programs as well. And then we also welcome two new businesses to Oak Park recently. Pink Garlic had a grand opening on no, or not November, excuse me, on October 19th. And uh, Urban Cra or Unexpected Craft Brewery held it on um, last Thursday, October 29th. And this is another business we added to the Water Tower District. And that is all I have for this evening. Okay, thank you, Director Flynn. Um, Madam Mayor, members of council, that completes the city manager report for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, city manager, Eric Chungay. Now it is called to the audience. Uh, Director Flynn, are there people who would like to speak? Yes, Kenneth Sherman would like to speak. Uh, good evening, Mayor, city council, city manager. Um, I have a couple 
concerns regarding the new trash con contract, which I found out about on the city's Facebook page initially this morning and then at tonight's city council meeting. Um, I just want to read you two news headlines I found on the internet, um, and these are only two. The first one is from June 28th of this year, and it's entitled, Dearborn Heights officials warn GFL to stop reaching its waste removal contract. And the second is from September 10th of this year, and the headline is, workers and park shortage caused GFL to stop garbage services in parts of Livington uh, County, Livingston County. So I'm concerned that I know you only had two weeks to come up with a solution, but I think SACRA and GFL literally and figuratively had the city of Oak Park over a barrel to sign this contract um, without doing your due diligence. So um, if I was able to find these concerns from other counties and cities, I don't know why the city, their attorney, and whoever else you know, didn't look into, you know, GFL's record and uh, what's our out clause if they don't perform. Thank you. We have no other names listed for public comment. Okay, then we will do um, call to the council. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Michigan State fans who were very happy yesterday and offer condolences to U of M fans. Uh, but it was such a hard fought game. It was neck and neck. And I think both teams can uh, feel proud of how they did. Um, the election is tomorrow. Please everyone vote. And tonight is the last meeting of the 38th City Council. It has been an amazing ride. We have done an amazing amount of work that we can all be proud of. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Burns. I'd like to echo what the mayor said. Tomorrow is election day. Please make sure you get out and vote. Um, I would like to say it's been a pleasure serving with this council and everyone continue to be safe and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Julie Edgar. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, go vote tomorrow and um, go blue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Council member Solomon Radner. The night before an election, I'm always so careful about making endorsements, but what Julie just said certainly sounded like an endorsement. Go blue. Um, yeah, everyone remember to go vote. It's obviously very important and uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow at the polls. Good night. Council member Whitehead. Yes, yeah, so we'd just like to echo the mayor, mayor pro temp council, please uh, get out to vote. Thank you. Thank you. There being no further business, come before this council. This council is adjourned. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everybody.